there's another one that's good where these high school students call their teachers by their first names. And like the teachers always like give a double take and give a real big look and all that. It's kind of funny. So here we go. All right, stupid ad. to me. I don't know if that's amazing to anyone else, but this is week 13. Next week is Thanksgiving, of course, so we don't have class on Thursday. Uh, and then after that is week 15, which was two more classes. So we have five more times to meet, including today. Uh, I have posted your last assignment, all right, which is probably good news, all right. It is an assignment, and we'll talk about it some today. Uh, I, I would imagine we will. I guess it depends how the rest of the discussion goes. But one of the big things, the, the sort of job one, you know, this is, I don't know, this is, uh, you know, everything's important, of course. Your assignments are important, too. But really a key thing for you going forward is getting your project done and doing a good job on it. So I want to sort of rewind here talk a little bit about the project. Uh, my new system for grading worked good until about a week or two back. Then the wheels fell off of the car, all right? And I'm having trouble keeping up, and I'm going to do my best to get back on track. I might grade some things out of order, so I might look at your project designs even though you have some old stuff. My aim is that you will bring your stuff for me to uh, bring your stuff to me in lab to grade. Because uh, that helps me stay on track. Some of you have it. And while well, that's not my preference, I will grade it. But know that I'm behind on that sort of grading. All right. So uh, if you haven't seen grades for things, it very well could be that you haven't brought to my attention in lab. And if you're okay with that, then I guess I'm okay with that. I will catch up eventually. Uh, I will aim to get your uh, designs graded as quick as I can, all right, uh, simply because that's so important going forward. And again, for the rest of the semester, going forward, the project is important, all right, real important. You know, just look at the point values involved in the project versus the rest of the class. You know, it's important, all right. Uh, the one thing I saw in the designs going forward, uh, uh, designs that I have looked at, is a lot of people had sites that maybe were the good start of a site, but didn't really connect the dots and, and, and connect to form a full picture. So for example, if you have a database that has uh, that has, you know, four tables, you know, uh, a, we'll go over the example. And I know I'll look around to see if anyone's like frantically writing this down to turn in as their design. But if you have a customer table, an order table, a sales rep table, like we do in some of the assignments, and then maybe a product table, all right? So you have those four tables. It's not enough to say, well, I'm going to have those four tables, and I'm going to have CRUD functionality for each of them. So you can create sales reps, you can create customers, you know, and you can create orders, and you can create, create items. There has to be some way that the data is integrated, all right? Remember, that's really what makes databases powerful, all right, is that you can connect databases, and you can see things. All right, and you can put things together. So 
being able to see all the products that exist for a category would be uh, an example. Be able to see customer rankings, all right, of customers and how much they sold uh, and have it sorted by that. Uh, all those things are valuable. So it's not just enough to have something where uh, have your, your database is simply a repository where you put stuff in and get it out. Your web page should organize it in a way that makes it useful. Again, the, de the whole definition between and the whole difference between data and information is data is just the raw facts. We, just, we don't want raw facts from this. We want to have some sort of usable information, all right? And therefore, we want it organized, and we want it to perform a useful function, all right? What do I mean by a useful function? I mean that solves part of the problem. You don't have to, you don't have to solve the entire problem, all right? So if you were doing a, a online poll, all right, which a lot of, which students have done in the past, where you can enter in questions and people can make it, put an answer to, you know, uh, who's going to win the Super Bowl this year and, you know, supply four choices and none of the above, right? Uh, maybe certain parts of it you don't have to do in your application. Like maybe you define the questions behind the scene but you allow users to answer the questions and you present the answers in an easy, understandable way so anyone can, can go and look and see how that is handled. All right? I hope, I hope that's making sense. All right? Uh, I just don't want data in and data out. That is, you know, if you do that, even if you do that perfectly, I would say that's like a 75%. All right, that's like, okay, you did that, but you didn't really work towards providing a solution to any sort of problem. So I'm going to aim to grade your design as quick as I can, but do keep that in mind. And if you have any questions on how to do that, let me know. So with all that in mind, I do have some material I want to go over today, or this week anyhow. But... What I'd like to do first is ask the old, what is, you know, what is the thing that you're most unsure about, especially related to your final project. Now, if it's something that you're unsure about for one of the assignments, that's valid too, right? Because if you're unsure about it for your assignments, you're probably going to be unsure about it as far as your project goes. But is there any kind of functionality that you're thinking of that you're not really sure how to handle or that you're most unsure of? So I like to just take answers from people and then we can discuss them as a unit. Do remember that this is still a pretty small class. I don't know, there is 10-ish people today. Yeah, I think we're right at 10. So therefore... You are 10% of the class, right? And as I always say, the old teacher saying is if one person doesn't understand it, there's a good chance another one or two people don't understand something. So if you don't understand something, that could mean up to 30% of the class doesn't understand it. Well, that's a significant portion of the class, all right? So does anyone have something that they're unsure about? Yes. So like on my project, I was kind of thinking I did the correct functionality. Okay. Example. Yeah, I, I'd be glad to. Can you remind me what your? Uh, I was going to do like a. I work for Sherwin Williams. I'm an intern, so I was going to do like an internal company portal. You can find like sales reps, what product sales reps sell, where their territory is, um, when they started, what position they hold. Just kind of like an internal. Okay. White page portal. So all right. So so this is a a portal about sales reps. Yeah. All right. So I, I think that you sort of answered your own question in your describing it. So, you said you want to create a portal about sales reps. 
And one of the things that you said, you said you wanted to see what products they sell. Yep. What products, location, what kind of position they hold, like manager, supervisor, just a rep. So what tables do you see yourself having? Products, location, job type. <laughs> yeah, right yeah I mean, they're right up there probably. Yeah. So products, location, job type, and what's the other one I meant, you mentioned? Uh, well, sales reps. And there's relations to them, and you have to... They have to identify the relationships to them because I imagine some of them are one to many, some of them are many to many. What are some ways that you could, and he describes sort of what he wants to provide. It's almost like a, a sales directory or a sales yeah. portal. Uh, what are some of the things that he mentioned that sort of relate to what I was saying about solving a problem? What are some things that you could put in this application that, that might because, okay, we could have uh, the ability to add products, add locations, add job types, add sales reps. Okay, what are some things that we could do that would take that very basic functionality and elevate it to something very more useful? Yes? Sales reports. Okay, some sort of sales report. So what would be an example of a sales report? Okay, maybe something like that. Sales purchased uh, by sales rep, by location, by product, something like that. Even, now I don't know, you didn't mention about the quantities of sales. I don't know if you were tracking that or not. I could. I didn't but you, you could. But even if you don't uh, uh, do that, you could have, and you even said this, what about show a sales rep and show all the products that they represent? Okay. What about a sales rep profile page that would show them and a list of all the products they sold? What about the reverse lookup? Show me a product. Show me all the people that sell it. All right. What about show me a location and show me all the products that are sold there? All right. Now, in this case, there's sort of a middle table here of sales rep. You may or may not have to show that, right? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Have a job description and show all the sales rep for that des description. So it's just ways, even if we don't get into the, if we add the quantity to it, then that expands it a million different directions. But even with just these simple tables, what we're doing is we're integrating and we're looking, we're going from this direction to that direction. So the sales rep, all the products that they sell. A product, all the sales reps that represent it. Then maybe have it where this would be a link. We show the name of the sales rep, we click on it, and we go to their full sales rep profile. All right, something like that. Questions about this, or no, that helps is that useful? Oh yeah, thank you. All right, because uh, a lot of people's, and I'm not picking on you, all right, uh, because part of it is making sure you understand the instructions, and this is why I'm going over this, because it was unclear to me if, if people maybe didn't get all the instructions that we were covering. Uh, and this is exactly why I'm doing this. You know, we introduced the basic functionality. When you're planning the project, you may be thinking about, well, what can I do this minute? All right, and okay, I know how to do CRUD functionality for this. Some of these other things I might be shaky on. It's like, okay, but be able to think, and even, if you know, even though you don't know how to do it, as a designer, you might think, well, I don't know how to do this right now, right today. But, you know, I got to assume it's possible, right? We put someone on the moon. All right. If we put someone on the moon, this is a classic boomer phrase, right? If we put someone on the moon, we could get a sales report that shows the products that they sell. Of course, right? You know, and it, it makes sense. It's logical. Now, this second, 
You might not know how to do that. Or going back in time a couple weeks when you did the design for it, maybe because we were just kind of starting in that, that, that area, you might not know exactly how to do that, but you know it's possible, right? So the question is, is how can I go and do that? So a lot of people had something like this, and I hope this serves as an example for people that were thinking very straightforward and simplistic to sort of expand what you're thinking to how these things could be combined or, or whatever. Other questions? Other things that you're not sure about in your project? Yes? Yes. Uh, I'm assuming that people have products. Well, I wanted to upload images to display for those products, and I made like an upload button, but I couldn't connect it to like create images out of that. Okay. Did the upload button upload, actually upload the image? It will give you a string. It will go into your file directory and pull out the string of the file that you want to put in, but I don't know what to do with that. I'm like, oh, no. Like, okay. I don't know how to handle that. Okay. You know, that's a really good one. All right? Because other people might have that, too. Does, anyone, like, yeah, products. does anyone else have that or maybe have that? Well, it doesn't matter. We're going to cover it anyhow. All right? Let's, let's take a look at that. Let's try to think that through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to download the last thing we were working on, which I don't remember it is, but we're going to download it. And we're going to add an image field to, uh, to, uh, to what? To the database. And then we're going to try to do something with it. Let's go into Canvas, and I haven't done this in ASP.NET Core, so this will be a good test for me. one. Now part of the project is you figuring out these things that we didn't talk about in class. But asking questions about that is one way that you can figure it out. All right? So don't be shy about asking questions, but also don't be shy in trying something and figuring it out. Uh, One thing I don't want to do is penalize ambition, right? You know what I mean by that? In other words, let's say that you tried to have that in your database, but it didn't work, all right? I don't want to penalize you for that because I'd rather see you try something and maybe get halfway there than to say, well, I'm just going to do a simple database of just here's one table of contacts, and I do that perfectly. You know what I mean? It's like I'd rather see you try something and not quite get it than just take the real safe route and, and uh, uh, even if you do it perfectly, so what? So, you know, it's not that, not that involved. So let's go here and let's find something to add an image to. and hope for the best.
let's go and let's create our database. always makes me worried because it takes so long but then eventually it kicks into gear all right so now we should be able to run this Go to instructors, perfect. We're gonna put a picture of instructors in here, all right? And guess who one of them's gonna be? That's a very good guess. <laughs> Especially Baby Yoda, which one of my, one of my daughters, well, my daughter posted a picture of Baby Yoda on Facebook, and one of her ex-boyfriends said, well, actually, that's not Baby Yoda. That's the same species as Yoda and all that. And I have never hated a person more in my life <laughs> than when they said that, because it's like, did you just mansplain Baby Yoda to us? And the answer, yes, he did. So I was so annoyed. No, we're going to look for that high school teacher. We're going to try to get a screenshot. High Vine. Should be able to go back to history, right? Yeah. Yeah, there we go. All right, let's pause. How do you get a screenshot in window? Just print screen? Alt print screen. Okay. Been so long since I had a Windows machine. And perfect. We'll save it on the desktop as hello.png. All right. Okay. So we want to go to the instructor page and put in the ability to upload an image. So let's find that. Let's do a stop. Then I'm going to go to Instructor, Edit. What do I have to do first? I'm going to add to the model. A string. A string called image name. All right. Now, think about this.
this. Some some people when they when they do this think that we have to add some kind of complicated type to the database. Like we have to add an image or a blob, which is a binary large object, or something like that. No. Remember, this is Webland, right? How do we put a web how do we put an image on a page? We put an image on a page by taking the name of the image and constructing an image tag. So let's write down the steps that we have to do to make this work. Let me open up a Word document. So to make this work, what we have to do is add image name field to database. Be able to update the image name field. Be able to upload an image to the website. And then finally be able to take image name and display an image. And you want to know the good thing about this? We can cheat. All right, we can wave our magic wand and pretend that we have done these some of these things. All right, this one we have done. So yay. Cross that one off our list. So now I'm going to update the image field. All right. I'm going to pretend then that I can upload, that I have uploaded that image to the website. How am I going to pretend that? How am I going to pretend that? Am I just going to close my eyes and say, okay, I'm uploading that image? Hard code the source of the image tag? Well, I could, that's one thing I could do. I could hardcore the source of the image tag. Or I could emulate the uploading by just going and copying and pasting that image in the right directory. Right? Yeah, I want my application to do it, but it doesn't have to do it all at once. So I'm actually going to do this first. I'm going to update the image. I'm going to do this second. And then I'm going to do this. Why do you think I'm doing it in that order? It's really dumb. I think it's because um, like, you want to make sure that the application is, is getting the image from yeah. It's a good way to test a little bit at a time, but I did specifically pick this order for a reason. Any guesses? It's the stuff I'm most confident I know how to do. I know that I can update the, the, uh, the, uh, the image name field in the, uh, in the table. All right? I know I can do that. Why do I know that? Because That's the one I'm most confident to do, so I'm doing it first. The second one, take the image name and display an image. Hmm. I might have done that. I don't remember. But I've done something similar to that. I've taken field names and displayed them on a web page. This is the same as that. The only difference is that instead of displaying plain text or a link or something like that, I'm going to display an image. So. Yeah, it's the, I may not have done this precisely, but I've done something like this before. And then finally, upload the image to the website. Well, I don't know how to do that, so we'll save that one for last. Maybe by the time I finish those other two, I will have gotten smarter. All right? At the very least, if I haven't gotten any smarter, I will have gotten two out of the three things out of the way, 
and I will only focus if I'm doing the last thing correctly, because I know the other two things work. I know that if I update the image, I can get the image to display, then it's just a matter of uploading the image. So let's go and let's do that. Uh, let me update the database. I should probably add a migration, right? How do you add a migration? Add dash migration. Uh, add image name. Yes. It's, I, I made it descriptive, so I knew what it's for. So if I go back and look at the migrations, I, I know that, well, this is the one I added the image name for. A lot of times if I was doing this, I would sort of group updates together. Like I wouldn't necessarily do an update just for one field, but if I had a set of updates I would do. I could maybe give it a version number, right? And in my documentation say version 1.1 includes image name for instructors, changes to the course to allow multiple instructors, whatever. And I would group all those things into like a, an update. Making me nervous here. And it's funny because a lot of times when I go over this in class, the one thing I would emphasize is this is actually how I program stuff. This isn't like me demonstrating like, well, this is what you should do. I would literally, I might not write down the steps, but in my head I would say, well, what do I need to do to do this? Okay. I need to do that. Yeah, I know how to do that. I need to do that. Well, I probably know how to do that. I need to do that. Well, we'll save that one for last. Okay, so let's update the database. All right. And so it should be there. So I'm going to go and add it to the instructor edit and the instructor details. So I'm going to add it to the instructor edit. Should be all set. Let's go and run this. Just go and edit this guy. And I'm going to put in for his image name, hello.png. 
All right, this is again, this is me doing this in steps. Ultimately, what's going to happen, and maybe you got to this point, is that I'm going to click a little browse button and I'm going to select that image. And it's going to go and it's going to take the image name and plop it in there. And it's going to save it to the database and it will also upload the file. So ultimately, we'll do that. But we're not at that point yet. So I'm going to go and save. And sure enough, which person did I do it to? This one? I did do it to this person. So this is not working. In other words. Interesting. Let's see if we can figure out why it's not working. two possibilities. Possibility number one is that it is updating and just not displaying. Possibility number two is it's not updating. All right? So let's go and let's look in the database to see if we can tell which one it is. So I'm going to go to SQL Server Object. databases view data and no one has an image name so it's not updating all right let's look a little closer at this if we look at the model what happens when we are updating? We have a task on post. So that's what happens when we are posting this. All right. We're looking instructor to update await context instructors include I equals oh. It looks like we have to specify that we want to update that field. It's not happening automatically for us. Right? So. Oh, no, that shouldn't be. What this is doing is this is including those other tables so that we can update all those tables at once. All right. Instructor, we're saying, okay, I. Looks like we are not doing anything with the image name. And we are doing it with the other fields. So I'm going to put in here Instructor does not contain a definition for image name. Image name spelled out. Oh, image name is spelled out. Thank you. Okay. All right. Because if you think about it, it was kind of dumb for me to assume it would automatically update it, right? Because you could have fields that you don't want to update. All right. 
and therefore why would you include them in an update? So this, what this says is this is, I want to update this field. So now let's try it. Okay, now we go and edit this person, and the image name is updated. Yay. Okay, so we did number one. It was harder than we thought, all right? But we did it, all right? Wasn't that bad. Now, the second thing we're going to do is I'm going to go on the details page. I'm going to treat that like an image, all right? But first, I have to pretend like my upload works. So how am I going to pretend that the upload works? I am going to go and... I'm going to move to my WW root I could create a folder for images if I want uh, just for laughs I'm not going to uh, but it wouldn't be that much different all right for some not yeah for simplicity more than laughs because that's not particularly funny all right, so now I'm going to go, and on the detail page, I'm going to put a display of the image. Let's put the image display This is how we display a column, right? Let's put the image display right at the top of the page. So what is our HTML for an image tag? IMG source equals, well, what is our source? Our source is the value of that image name field. What's our alt attribute? Well, we should probably make it the name of the person. What's more, we're going to make it image of, and we're going to put their last name. And then we close our image tag. All right. So what's the difference between this and what I did before? What I did before was I just plopped this display for, and I put the model field I wanted to, I just plopped that as text in the middle of the page. So it displays as text. Here I'm displaying the value of that image smack dab in the middle of an image tag. So that will become not just plain old text that I display on the page, but that will become the source attribute for an image tag. And likewise, the name, the last name, will become the alt attribute for the um, image tag. I think there's actually a full, Im a full name. Yeah, let's use that instead, just in case there's two people with the same last name. So now let's run this. And let's go to Instructor and Details. And it doesn't work. Why doesn't it? Well, why doesn't it work? I don't know. Did I move it? Yes, I did. I moved it into the root. Ah, does it need to be into the root, though? Right. And since and when it's 
it's output into the in, uh, it's displayed as HTML, it's it'll it'll just be searching for an image in the same directory as that page. Exactly. So I put it I didn't have it in the right directory. I'm actually gonna go back and put it in an image folder anyhow. I lied. So probably the best way to do this is I'm going to create a new folder called images. And I'm going to put that in there. And then I'm going to say, starting from the root, go to the folder images. And that's where it is. So... Let's try it again. And there they are. Okay. So we got two of the three things done. And this is, a, here's the good news. We ran into a little bit of trouble, but because I basically knew what I was doing, the trouble was small, all right? I didn't think through all the details. It wasn't quite as easy as I thought it was, but hey, it was dealing with stuff I have already done before, so figuring out those little hitches wasn't that big a deal. So now I'm in a good mood, right? I got two out of my three things done, which means that if it was quitting time, Miller time, or whatever your favorite beverage is, I could go home and be happy. I won't be brooding on the drive home about how I'm worthless and none of this stuff works and anything like that. Okay? So, now I only have the one more thing to figure out. I was, here, here's the interesting psychology here. It's really the toughest thing. All right? And it's the thing that I know least about. But, I'm optimistic because I got two-thirds of the problem solved. All right? So let's Google ASP.NET Core Upload File. ASP.NET Core allows you to upload files up to 28 meg. I'm sure this is smaller than 28 meg, but just to be double sure, oh yeah, it's not even a meg, yeah. Consider a simple upload page. Click on upload file button. place to start. So I'm going to go to my edit. See what this gives us. Oh, browse. So I browse. 
browse. I go and look around. Oh, that is a desktop. I find an image. Must be. I don't like the fact that they don't include sample images in Windows anymore. I must have moved it off of the desktop. So let's go and let's get rid of it. And let's put it back on the desktop. So browse. Hello PNG. Open. Uh, look what we got there. We got the file name. All right. Now I go and press save and edit. Now well, something isn't working. Let's go and look at the database. working because because that um oh sorry um, that file input it was it was just by itself it wasn't attached to any field exactly so let's go and try that let's go and see if we can make that happen so where do we go and do that we will go and Stop debugging. ASP4 instructor image name validation for instructor image name. I apologize for using Java standards of doing the camel case for the names. They tend to capitalize attributes. Uh, and I'll put this like that. All right. So let's watch what's going on. Nothing up my sleeves. Images folder is empty. There's no value in the database for that. That's important to do because we don't want to do too good a job pretending that we knew how to upload before, right? Because when we test the upload, we want to make sure the file isn't there and not leave it there from before. Uh, view data. Okay, everyone has a null image name. Cool. So let's go and run this. Something tells me this still isn't going to work. Okay. So we went and saved it. Let's go and look if it uploaded it, first of all. Nope. 
and it'll at least save it in the database. Save it in the database. Nope. So we're 0 for 2. All right. So I have a feeling it wasn't going to work because I didn't read this whole thing. All I did was go and copy the markup. The upload action, though, needs to do this, all right, and needs to go and find the file name and set the file name and upload it, all right. So let's put this in. and see if we have at least one thing going on. At this point, I'm not sure what to do next. So I'm going to call it a day, right? Because we're almost there. That's the good news. And I can quit and not feel completely discouraged. But I don't want to stand up here painfully debugging for 15 minutes trying to figure out. I trust I'm pretty close to having this figured out, and I will by next time. Okay? You're welcome to take a stab at it. I'll, put, I'll, I'll upload what I have. I'll comment out this stuff because this is the bad stuff. I know I need to do this. And we'll figure it out by then. Questions? We'll do a similar thing next time. A similar thing in the sense of I have stuff that I can go over. right? I always have stuff I can go over. doesn't matter. But I'll first ask if you have any problems questions relating to the project and we'll cover those first and then we'll proceed stuff that I want to cover. All right, we'll see you over in lab. I'll go unlock the door and then I'll